Hi, I'm Mike. Welcome to my Waffle Square, where I obsess about things and you get to benefit from it. In this video, I explore what happens when you pair the Link Spider backstop camera mount with the Insta360 1X 360 degree camera. Epic sports footage or epic fail? Let's get going. All right. Get a little interlude between the next game. All right. Shout out to all my softball dads. Also baseball dads. Well, heck, any dad who's looking to hook something up to a chain link fence. So roller derby dads, uh, outdoor hockey, hockey dads, prison dads, tennis, let me know. Anyway, let's do a little unboxing. Before we cut this open, take a look at this label. Josh Greer himself from Link Spider has his name right on the label. That's pretty cool. All right. I've been waiting to open this one. This is gonna be fun. There's supposed to be a little pull tab on here. Guess not. Here we go. Yes. Very cool. Comes fully assembled. That is great. Look at this paper. <laughs> I don't want that to blow away. So this is fully adjustable here. Slides all the way down to the bottom, all the way up to the top. So in case you have something taller that needs to get over uh, the Link Spider, or most likely something just like this that's gonna look right within this box. But you set that up on the fence, put your camera on here, and away you go. You can film your kids and never miss a moment. There's a few other videos out there on the Link Spider, not too many, so I'm glad you came here and you're wanting to check it out. But we're gonna put a 2019 spin on it, and we are going to use the Insta360 along with this Link Spider. How many times have you been there at the ball field? Something great's happened, and there's been great fan reaction. <laughs> or what if two beer-drinking dads get into a fight right behind the dugout? Wouldn't you love to have that action? As far as build quality goes, this is a thick, uh, nice rigid metal, a really nice rugged quality. There are rubber washers in between the arms and the main plate so that when you tighten down, there's gonna be plenty of cushion. Uh, these edges are even honed down just a little bit. No, no jagged edges on it, nothing that's gonna cut your bag or anything like that. So, real happy with that. I can't wait to try it out. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And you're in luck, because we are heading to Denver for a softball tournament. We're gonna be able to put it through all its paces and give you an honest account of how it does. Let's get started. <laughs> So we made it to Denver, and uh, I'm out here at a field that's uh, unoccupied right now because you wouldn't be able to hear a thing I have to say with all the chanting that goes on with softball games. Um, let me first say how much I sympathize with the people of Denver. Your traffic is terrible in all directions all day long. I truly sympathize with you and all your road construction. All right, as far as mounting the Link Spider, uh, the, if you don't know how to mount it already, you really should go watch Josh Greer's video on YouTube. I'll leave a link. Uh, he's the owner of Link Spider, and he does a great job explaining. But I'm just basically ripping off what he says. Once you get the top two arms in uh, a good position, you can lock those down. And during game time, or even afterwards if you have enough storage space, uh, you can leave them linked like that. And they just lock right into place. Really great. And then... Uh, you get this third arm here going, tighten that one down, and then uh, Josh says that it's kind of tough to get this one to go anywhere, as you can see, so just bring it up here and lock it down into place, and I find that works really good. So to attach our 360 to our Link Spider, we're gonna need the included uh, mounting hardware, and let me give uh, some information on this real quick. If you look uh, carefully, this is a, uh, a through threaded 
knob. It is not integral, meaning it's not permanently connected to this piece. If uh, you start by just screwing this whole unit into your 360 from underneath, it's simply gonna thread all the way down into this knob and you won't have anything uh, to, to put onto your camera. So the best thing to do actually uh, is to take this off initially and first connect this little uh, threaded piece right to your camera. And once that's seated in good, then with the rubber gasket on the camera side, you place that in to the slot and tighten it down. Now you've got um, horizontal movement back and forth. You can slide it uh, closer or further away from the fence depending on the type of camera you're using. All right, so this was the first setup I did. I lowered this guy down right even centered uh, with the opening in the chain link fence. And this little bit of standoff here, this tiny bit between the camera body and the fence created uh, such a distraction with the fencing that it was really unusable. So let me show you how I got around that on the first time I tried it. All right, this is a standard GoPro style pivot. This one actually came with the Insta360. So I installed that uh, directly to this mounting bracket and then to the camera. And that, when this area here is loose, allows you to pivot the camera back and forth so that I could try to get it closer to the fence. But as you can see, when you mount it here, this Insta360 is so tall, it, there's no place inside of the typical viewing window for the 360 to get a clear view. So uh, a quick way around that is just to loosen these and bring it all the way up to on this spot right there. And then you can laterally move it back and forth to get it centered right in the fence. Tighten those up. And then I was able to push the camera right against the fence and you can see it hits right up top here. So that's about as far as you can get. And that's the setup I used the first time. Now let's take a look at the footage I got with this setup. So as you can see here, the sides of the chain link fence are still quite visible and distracting. So I went into the software and I cropped in uh, so that you wouldn't see those anymore. And once I did that, the image immediately broke down. It became blurry and grainy and really unusable. Now compare this to the old GoPro Hero 4 at 1080p zoomed in on home plate. And look how sharp that image is right there very very clear now try zooming in with the insta360 to home plate and the image is so bad you can't make out faces or numbers i had to come up with another way of mounting the camera all right so pretty unconventional we have rotated the link spider 45 degrees and we've changed the mounts to hang this way and then come up this way for really good support and then i had to flip around the camera mount so that uh, it would have this section here higher. And once I did that, I was able to drag the camera all the way up, tighten everything down, and then pivot the camera as far forward as I could. And I'll be honest with you, this is going to have a slight uh, risk of getting hit by the ball, uh, but take a look at this footage. Now that is, a whole lot better. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you my fourth outfit of this video. E I V A! Jeez, Dad, you're kind of a diva. As well as breaking news. First, that's not the Insta 361X. It's in fact its replacement, the DJI Osmo Action. Reason for that is, while making this video and trying to find just the right angles, I came across a serious overheating issue that causes the video to spin uncontrollably once the camera itself overheats. Before I returned that camera, I made a whole video about it.
that I'll link in the description and put over here at the end of the video. So since the Insta360 ONE X is incapable of long run times without overheating and thus ruining that footage as well as every other video shot afterwards, it's not gonna work out for these purposes here as a backstop camera. Now sure, you could leave it set up and then sit in close proximity with your phone and hit record, uh, start and stop to get certain videos of your child playing, but that really defeats the purpose for me since I wanted to set it, turn it on, and then be free to go with my camera to take other angles of video and photographs. And for that reason there, I'm sorry to say it is an epic fail. Aww. Yeah, yep, I know. So if you found this video helpful, will you please give it a thumbs up? It really helps the algorithm to start suggesting it to other people. And keep a lookout for future videos. I haven't given up on the Link Spider. It's a fantastic invention. But now instead of trying it out with the Insta360 ONE X, I'm switching all my attention over to the DJI Osmo Action. Until next time, thank you for watching.